Good morning. So sorry I'm late. If anyone was waiting, if anyone's done Facebook Live, you know how fickle they can be. And today was no different for us, it seems. But hopefully, we are live now and you can see and hear. Hi, Susie. Oh, awesome. Thank goodness for that. That was stressing me right out. Okay. So, first live of the year, 2024. First draw along. Hello. Oh, loads of people. Oh, awesome. Okay. So, we are drawing today at the polar bear. In fact, we're drawing polar bear and her babies. I'm assuming her. And we, we're also going to be learning a bit about the polar bear as well. I've got some facts that I'm going to share with you as well. But this is just a nice, chilled, relaxed draw along. No rules, because there's no rules with artwork. Um, it's all about enjoying it. Oh, so many new people as well. Hi from Bean and Bud. Oh, welcome. Um, so I'm not on my own either. I've got Michael next to me. So Michael is my 11 year old son who is also home educated. And he's going to be joining in as well. I might get him to read some of the facts out as well if I get too stuck into my drawing. But basically, if you're new to us, which it looks like I'm seeing lots of new names. Hi, Erin. Hi to Jodie. Hi, Gemma. Oh, hi, Stanley. Oh, my goodness. I can't keep up. Um, hi to everyone. If you're new to us, this is a really chilled out drawing. So that I don't give rules. I don't say that you should draw it like this. You can draw it however you want. What is important is that you're creating and that you're having fun with it. So there's no right or wrong. We're going to learn about the animal as we go along. You can join in as much as you want. You can change the picture as much as you want. I love seeing how creative you guys can be. You've got much better imaginations than me. Hi, Mr. Layla as well. Hi, Jill, Emily and Freya. Oh, busy, busy. So as we as I draw, you're welcome to draw what I'm drawing, or you can just hang out with us and draw however you want to draw. The important thing is that you feel inspired and you have fun with it. So we are going to be drawing a first for me. I've never drawn a polar bear. And this whole term is going to be Arctic animals or Antarctic animals, polar animals. Um, and most of them are going to have white fur. So this is going to be a new challenge. We have something I haven't done before. And hopefully we can sort of muddle through together. So I'm going to start drawing landscape. So my page is this way around rather than this way around. So that I can get the babies in as well, the little bear cups. And I'm just drawing with a normal pencil. And then I'm going to be using... A few different colours. So although the polar bear, we automatically think, oh, he's white. When you actually look at your, the reference image, there's lots of yellow golden tones I can see there as well, and some grey tones. So it isn't just going to be a black outline and a white bear. We're going to try and add some colour as well. The babies are so cute, aren't they, Erin? They're adorable. Um, okay, so should we get started? Should I start with a fact first? I'm going to put my list of interesting facts. So this first one I thought was quite interesting. They are classed, polar bears are classed as marine mammals. So they're the only bear that's classed as a marine mammal. They spend most, of, and this is because they spend most of their lives on the sea ice of the Arctic Ocean, depending on the ocean for their food and habitat. They are the only bear species to be considered marine animals. So they're the first facts. We've learned something new today. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to start by light, lightly sketching the outline and then I'll correct it as I go along and we're drawing in a realism style but it doesn't matter if the picture doesn't look exactly like your reference image because if we wanted that we could just print it out we are creating artwork today so it's about our interpretation of the image that we're looking from so if you've got your reference image to hand I would definitely recommend you do so um, rather than trying to just copy from my rough sketching so if you've got another another device that you can look at the image from that definitely helps and the reason I like to have it electronic is so that I can enlarge it especially my old age my eyesight is not so good these days so I like to zoom in on things so I can see the details a bit clearer so I'm just starting out I'm really roughly sketching the rough shapes I can see for the mama polar bear before I add in the little cub shapes as well so these are just they just look like random shapes at the moment because that's exactly what they are and that's just so that I can get the sort of right sizes and proportions in. And then I'll go back in and add in detail once I'm happy with the, with the starting point. Oh, that is very cute, isn't it? That little polar bear is raising his paw up. I mean, they start off cute, but I wouldn't want to run into one fully grown in real life. I don't imagine they're quite, quite so cute if they're out hunting. And I'm going to share some information about what they eat and how they hunt as well. So that is my very, very rough start. I'm going to put a little bit of snow in. I don't know if anyone else has got any, but we've got a slight fluttering of snow, which I just thought was awesome for our first 
first draw along being that we are in the polar regions. How appropriate. Yeah. It's not settling, but we have got snow here. Has anyone else got any? It's starting to settle in the morning. Yeah. And my sister and me love polar bears. Oh, Jodie, I love the babies. Yep. They are cute. So I'm quite happy with that, that rough sketch to begin with. So now I need to go in and put a few more details because they're not quite recognisable as polar bears just yet. Susie, I'm very excited for the Arctic fox. That's Michael's favourite. That was a request by Michael that we draw an Arctic fox. So absolutely have to include that. So now I'm going back in and I'm putting the muzzle in of the mum and the eyes as well. Now, the key is to keep looking at your reference picture. Our memory and our brain, it's a wonderful thing, but it does play tricks on us sometimes, and it will convince us, or we think, oh, yeah, that's what it looks like. But actually, if you look back at your reference image, it might not be quite what you imagined. So keep looking back at your reference image as you're sketching. So the, the percentage, I reckon, is 80% looking at the reference image and 20% looking at your own page. So... Obviously, you can't see my face, but when I'm working, my head is flicking between the two constantly. And that's how you get a more accurate picture, if that's what you're going for. So I've sketched in roughly where I think the years go. And the eyes. She's not quite face on, so it's not exactly symmetrical. So that's that's what I mean about your brain can sort of assume something, but actually when you look at the image, it's not exactly symmetrical. Now I'm going to zoom into the nose so I can see a bit more detail on the nose, where the nostrils are. If you can hear some background noise, that's our puppy, who's um, not happy that we've put her in a crate for a nap. <laughs> Jenny, I'm late. Where's the image, please? If you look in the event discussion, you can see the image from there and you can download it from there. Otherwise, if you're struggling to find that, you could, you could copy along from what I'm drawing. Now, a nice, big, thick, fluffy neck that I'm going to try and draw in. The fur detail I'll add in later, so I'm still just working on the form and making sure that all the features are drawn in and then the fur I can worry about in a little bit. I'll probably do that as I shade. And I can't really see toes on one leg, but I can see some claws on the other leg, so I'll make sure I put them in as well. Erin's but I want a dog so bad. <laughs> They're hard work, Erin, I'm not going to lie. They create a lot of work and jobs to do. <laughs> Bit like children, really. <laughs> Pinch my rubber. I've got it. <laughs> so as I go along, I can get, I can rub out some of the guidelines that I roughly sketched in before because if I leave them on my page, they're just going to confuse my brain a bit. It doesn't take a lot. Now I'm going to sketch in those claws. How many can I see? One, two, three, four, five claws. I'm going to share another fact now. So, polar bears aren't classified as endangered yet. They are classified as vulnerable, as in their numbers are declining. But that doesn't, yeah, that, that's not ideal. Um, so, and that's mostly because of climate change. So, if anyone knows anything about polar bears, you might know that they're running out of ice on which to hunt. So, um, with climate change and polar regions melting, obviously it's having an impact on their hunting abilities. So, not ideal, 
they're not the conditions aren't great at the moment they're not yet endangered but it's not looking too great for them come in and get to the rest of mum and then I'll go work with the cubs Now this one, this fact I did not know, and I've watched a lot of David Attenborough, <laughs> a lot of David Attenborough programs on polar bears and wildlife in general. Polar bears can swim constantly for days at a time, not hours, days in the water, swimming non-stop, which I just thought was amazing. Their fitness and stamina must be incredible. I reckon I can manage two laps of the swimming pool before I'd have to stop. I think I've drawn the baby's nose a little bit too big, so I need to adjust that. So lots of new people joining us today. If you are new, um, we do this every Monday, and this term is all about the polar regions. We are travelling the world this year with our draw-alongs, and last term we were in Czechoslovakia, were we? Mm -hmm. Or Australia. That might have been term one. I'm completely off now. It's all merging into one. But you might be interested to know as well, if you're interested in polar animals, if you weren't already aware, Laura over on Theatre of Science is doing, um, is studying the, the polar regions as part of a science provision this term as well. And I believe Twinkle have got a lot going on with the polar regions as well. So loads going on. And it just by sheer coincidence, I think we've all had, I think because it's gone into the winter months, we all have the same idea that it makes sense to study the polar regions. Um, but yeah, we're going to be definitely checking out what Laura's done on Theatre of Science. She's also, I've noticed, put a lot of her provisions on a snazzy new website that's really easy to navigate. So I would definitely check that out too. Mine has a sharp, dumb, cute, not realistic. Oh, Michael's going, so Michael's decided he's not drawing in a realism style, he's drawing it in a cute style. <laughs> we like that. See this little polar bear lifting his paw up. They've got massive paws, haven't they? And then the name is put, please, can you do a tiger? Have we done a tiger before? We could do No, we did a leopard, didn't we? I don't, I, there's another tiger. I don't know if we... So we've already got this year's planned out in terms of where we're travelling and what we're drawing. Um, I'm sure there's a big cat in there somewhere. I'm not sure if it's a tiger, though. My memory is failing me somewhat in my age. Right, now I'm going with this one. He's looking more face on at us, this little cub. So his eyes... are a little bit more symmetrical. Big round skulls and obviously the same little ears poking out as well. And their fur looks a little bit more fluffier than mum's, so we're going to have to try and play around with the texture a little bit when we add the tone in as well. Jess has drawn a polar bear before. Oh, awesome. It'd be interesting to see. This is where it's really handy to keep hold of all your artwork, even the older stuff. Because if you do ever revisit and draw something new, it's nice to compare how you've progressed and how you've grown as an artist. So even if you draw something, you think, oh, I'm really not happy with that, and you want to throw it away, don't. Keep hold of it. And then one day, you might find that you have revisited that image or you've drawn something similar again. And it's really nice to reflect back and see how you've grown as an artist. And so red pandas are cute too. And Joe, thank you, because your memory is better than mine. If <laughs> we do have a red panda scheduled for our next theme when we visit China. So next term is China. And red panda is included there. 
Molly, can I do it as a cartoon drawing instead of a realistic one? Absolutely. I just happen to be drawing in realism style, but there is no right or wrong answer or right or wrong way of approaching this. You do whatever you want to do, as long as you're enjoying it and you're creating something. That's what it's all about. So I could never be a math teacher because there's only, <laughs> there's only one right answer. That doesn't work for me. <laughs> So, I'm not too keen on my first baby cub. I think he looks a little bit mean with his face. and He definitely doesn't in the picture. I want to make him cute. I'm going to change the eyes a bit. Look at the angle of the eye. He looks like a villain. Michael's already shaving. You can hear him. <laughs> And let's draw the eye back in again. And then I'm ready to start adding tone and shading. Oh, that's still not right. I clearly need to warm up a bit since I haven't drawn since our last draw long before Christmas. <laughs> there we go. So I can swim constantly for days at a time, as well as reaching speeds of up to six miles an hour in the water, they can swim six miles in an hour, they can uh, swim long distances and steadily for many hours to get from one piece of ice to another. Their large paws, as we've just drawn them in, are they especially adapted to swimming, which they will use to paddle through the water while holding their hind legs flat like a rudder. So although they're, they're these big chunky animals, they're actually really proficient swimmers which is just as well because in order to navigate the landscape they need to be able to swim between the ice to find their prey. So I'm really happy actually with the outline. Not perfect but that's what makes it unique. Um, and I'm going to start adding in some colour and tone. So I think what I'm going to do is start with a black pencil and put in things like the nose and the eyes and I'm using a dark brown for the eyes because if you zoom in I think that's probably the colour they would be um, and then what I'll do is use some grey and then finally I'll put in some sort of sandy colours especially mum on the reference image she's definitely got some sort of golden sandy colours and the sun is reflecting off of them so that's what I'm going to do but you can do it however you want I know it's, is it Freya's doing a pink polar bear can't wait to see it <laughs> So, right, start with the black first of all. And I'm going to try and keep light tones and darker tones. That's definitely what helps with realism style drawing, is having different tones rather than just one solid black. Try and have variations of it within the same area because that makes something look a little bit more 3D and realistic. Even on the nose, if you look at the nose, you've got a very dark area here, but it gets lighter here. You've got a big white highlight there as well. So she's got a shiny nose. I can't get the shape at all. You know, if you want, Harvey, a lot of artists, professional artists, will trace an outline. So if you're struggling with the form and it's not enjoyable for you, then you can always trace it from a device, especially if you've got a device like this because the light shines through, depending on what paper you're using you might be able to trace it through and then you can focus instead after on the texture and the colour. So rather than get too frustrated and disheartened, it's not cheap because you're still drawing, it's still artwork. Can I make a grayscale one? I don't have enough pens. Absolutely. I know some, some people prefer to just work in HB pencil. I used to actually, I used to only draw in grayscale. So, yep, again, you can interpret it however you want to. If you have paints and you prefer painting, you could paint it instead. Painting's hard, though. It's hard, it's hard to control, isn't it, paint? So even though I'm adding the colour, I am still constantly looking back at the reference image and making adjustments as I draw, a lot, draw along as well. So, because especially my brain, it will definitely make it up in my head and it will look completely different. So I have to keep checking back, make sure I've got the image right and the details and the shape. So 
How are we doing for time? Oh, I'm, I'm struggling for time. This is, I'm obviously spending too long on this now. Because I want to, I'm using watercolour pencils, so I will want to add some paint, uh, some water afterwards to make it work like paint. I need oh, to make sure I've got enough blues. You haven't got enough blues? I need enough Are you doing this, are you doing the sky in the background, are you? Well, not the sky, the ice. The ice. snow in the background, yeah. Mm. Get these fine details down, and then the fur I might have to work in a little bit quicker. Do they eat fish? Oh, I've got some some seconds on their diet. Let me just find that. So, um, facts on their hunting as well. Less than two percent of their hunts are successful. So, in every hundred hunts, they've only catch food twice. Um, so, although about half of the polar bear's life is spent hunting for food, their hunts are rarely successful. A polar bear's main prey consists of ringed seals and bearded seals, which they hunt in a variety of ways, either by breaking into pupping dens, waiting at breathing holes or at the water's edge, or stalking seals that have hauled out to rest on the ice. Besides catching seals, polar bears will also scavenge car carcasses or settle for small mammals, birds, eggs and vegetation. So it doesn't say fish. I imagine if fish was an option, they would eat fish. But I imagine they're not fast enough to catch them in the water. So instead, they wait for the seals that are, have come up from a breathing hole to catch them, or um, they can scavenge, scavenge as well. I'm sure I saw on a an, an wildlife program a polar bear was scavenging off of the carcass of a beached whale. And if they're struggling to find food, food, they're going to settle for things that they wouldn't normally eat as well, wouldn't they? One ringed seal provides a polar bear with enough energy for 11 days. And they typically kill and eat every four to five days. So they don't have to eat every day like us. But they do need to eat fairly regularly. Um, my, my yeah. Looking at the size of them and the fact that they have to travel far for food, they're going to be using up lots of energy, aren't they? And we're going into the black details of the babies as well. I've got those fine details down. I'm going to give them enough time. And I can go in and play with the fur a little bit. And so to build up tone, I don't press hard with my pencil. I tend to layer it up so you don't get really harsh pencil lines. That's a, that's a good tip. And if you're, again, new to our draw-alongs, if you would like some feedback on your drawing, then later this evening there'll be a post put up on our main page which will be a picture of my drawing and you're invited to comment with a picture of your drawing um, before 9pm and then I'll come along and give you some individual feedback and tell you what you've done amazing and what you could do to improve your artistic skills a little bit more. Oh now with the eyes it's really important to try and keep a highlight in there because I think that helps to um, bring it to life a little bit and make it look less flat of an image. Try and keep a white highlight if you can. Oh, they're just too adorable. Where's my grey gone? There it is. They've got little grey muzzles. Oh, this is an interesting fact. Polar bear's skin is black. So there they've got white fur. Underneath it all, their skin is black.
They do, and I mentioned obviously they, they set, they're threatened by climate change and the loss of ice, but they actually face more threats than climate change. Although it remains the greatest threat to the polar bear's survival, that's not all the predator is up against. The oil and gas industry is turning its eyes to the Arctic, and with it comes the potential risks of habitat destruction from oil exploration work. Contact with oil spills can reduce the insulating effect of the bear's fur, requiring them to use more energy to get warm, and it can poison them if, it's, if they eat it. Polar bears can also be exposed to toxic chemicals such as pesticides through their prey, which can affect a bear's biological function and ability to have babies. So both threats to the polar bear effectively come from humans. As we discover every time we study one of these animals, it's generally human kind as a species that are the cause for concern. Obviously not us as individuals, but generally, we didn't do it, but generally speaking. So I'm using my grey now to go in and put in the shadow. So if you look at your image carefully, you can see dark tones and lighter tones, and that's where the light is reflecting off of the different form and shapes of the bears. It's obviously, although it's snowy, you can see that there's a lot of sunlight there. So that's what I'm trying to, to create with my um, grey rather than a black, because I think black would be too harsh. I'm trying to show the shadow work. And with the, the babies, with the cubs, I'm sort of colouring in like a curly fashion. I'm sort of scribbling in circles to try and make the fur look fluffier. And they have got some yellow tones in there, so I'll probably add the yellow tones as well. When shading, I smudge the tone to make it more smooth. Yeah, that's definitely that's a technique. You can use your finger. You can get smudging sticks as well. I used to do that. I don't know why I don't do that anymore. Just, your techniques tend to change and develop the more you practice and you find different ways that work for you. But that's a good tip. Thanks for sharing that. Mine looks like a Star Wars machine. <laughs> that would be interesting to see. Mike was a fan of Star Wars. Not a fan. Oh, I know the ones you mean. What are they called? Attack? I can I can imagine the one you mean. I'm doing mine rainbow. Oh, awesome! That's a nice, lovely, creative way to approach it. Oh. That's one pole there, pretty much done. Right, Michael? Yeah, some of the blue makes you yellow. It just creates other colours, doesn't it? You can say you're meant to do it. No one will know. So if you are new to us and you've just only just found us, we noticed that quite a few people joined the page yesterday. So if you've only just found us and you're interested in some more free provisions um, our previous draw alongs are have them uploaded to, well you'll find them on the facebook page anyway if you scroll back through past events but on our youtube channel we've put them there as well so you can just search for technology parts there or any easier way if you go to our website website which is <laughs> i know what i mean www.technologystriumph.co.uk scroll past if you go into our courses you'll find all of our um past all of our other paid for courses for the qualifications but underneath all them is all our free provisions so we've got more than just our draw along there's other things on there as well that you can make use of and that's for the whole home educating community to use done oscar saying i'm quite glitchy today oh no i thought we'd fix our internet issues oh, no. am i gonna have to make a phone call we did not <laughs> I'm close, but my cubs look like kangaroos. Oh, maybe they're a hybrid. <laughs> Which brings me to another fact. There is such a thing as a polar bear, grizzly bear hybrid. Let me find that fact because they've got a special name as well. It's got too many pages. Right. So grizzly bear, polar bear hybrids exist. As recently as 2006, genetic testing confirmed the existence of polar bear, grizzly bear hybrids, also known as growler bears or pizzly bears. Pizzly bears. That doesn't really sound like it suits it, that makes it sound like it's small. 
Um, the hybrid bear physically resembles an intermediate between the two species. So it looks a bit like a grizzly bear and a bit like a polar bear. But as wild hybrids are usually birthed from the polar bear mothers, so it's normally a grizzly bear dad and a polar bear mum, they are raised and behave like polar bears. The ability for polar bears and grizzly bears to interbreed is unsurprising when you consider that polar bears evolved from brown bears 150,000 years ago. So that was a new, new piece of information for me. I thought you said granola bear. <laughs> Mine is different shades of blue. Oh, nice. I bet that looks really effective. So now I'm going to go in for the mama bear and add in some shading. I've got, I've got up my pace a little bit if we're going to be done by midday. <laughs> That's too busy chatting. I, you know, this I did go to school, and unfortunately, I was that kid that could not stop talking. Got me into trouble. I just had a lot to say, you know. Nothing's changed. <laughs> I always finish first one minute. Do you? Yeah. Do you set yourself the challenge of no, finishing early? I always finish like thirty one minutes. So mama bear's got a lot of grey tones on her muzzle, so I'm going to put those in. I might even put a little bit of black in because it's quite dark. It's almost like you can see the colour of her skin showing through. I didn't sign it. You didn't sign it. So again, if you've not drawn, completed one of our draw-alongs before, your artwork isn't finished until you sign it. And don't forget, that's going to be signing date. It's going to be the first one that we write 2024 on. And that's so that your work stays in your ownership you don't you know when you're a rich and famous artist one day you don't want somebody else taking credit for your artwork oh i'm missing some comments i'm drawing bits of ice in the background floating on the sea and some seals are chilling on those bits of ice. oh that's clever erin well done yeah that's a nice use of imagination so they've got their prey in the background Can I just check? Has it been glitchy for everybody? I just want to make sure that it is our end before I phone the internet provider. And <laughs> or is it just isolated to a couple of people? Oh, it's fine. Oh, good. Oh, well, we won't <laughs> phone. I won't be grumpy and phone up the internet provider then. So it might be Oscar that's the internet your end playing up today. Her body's a lot darker where the light isn't falling on it. So I'm going to need more shading on the back end of her. She actually looks like she's got some dirt in her fur, but because it's my artwork, I can just neaten her up and give her a bath, and she's not going to have the dirt in her fur. I'm not going to draw that in. She definitely has some sandy colours. Now, normally, what I should do is test the colour out on a separate piece of paper, but I haven't got one for me, so we're just going to go with it and I hope for the best. And I'm going to put these sort of golden tones where the sun's reflecting off of her fur. This is the colour I'm using. With the camera there. So it's like a sandy brown, but I'm just using it ever so lightly just to add in some tones. You can see where the sun's hitting her from one side, so that's where the, the more golden tones are. And the cub's got one his ear as well, so I'm just putting the 
a little bit on the cups as well. Rona has a clash with the sports session today. She'll catch up later on the network. Oh, well, yes, please do. It will stay on the Facebook page for you to catch up on if you've got other things you need to do. Um, the only the only time frame you need to follow is making sure that you you post your work before 9 p.m. on my post um, for some feedback. Erin's already done. Do mothers carry their babies on the backs when they swim? That is a good question. Michael, I'm going to get you to Google it because you've finished. Do polar bear mums carry babies on their back when they swim? Might have to find out. I have got a load more facts to share, so I might get them to read those out for us as well. My son's still sketching. I've lost me grey again. Where's he from? It's probably right in front of me. There it is. Right. <laughs> when will your post go up later? Normally around 6pm, so between 6 and 9. I would suggest Again, because I know what it's like when you're running from one place to the next or thinking about multiple things and multiple children. Um, set an alarm on your phone for about 7 p.m. as a reminder. Do polar bear mums carry their babies on their backs? Erin turned 10 last Friday. Happy birthday, Erin. Did you do anything nice? Right. And for now, I want to show that some of that shaggy I learned longer fur on mum. So I'm using my grey to and, and longer strokes with my pencil to show that longer fur. Cubs have got fluffy fur. Okay, Michael found out an answer. It is. Let's see. When ready, the mother polar bears lead her cubs to sea ice. Travel is slow with frequent west rest and nursing stops. A mother sometimes carries her cubs on her back through areas of deep snow or water. Wow, that must be tricky if you've got more than one. Sometimes they have three as well, don't they? When I'm smudging my lines, it keeps going where I don't want it to go. What I would recommend, have you seen my rubber that I've been using? It's, it looks like Play-Doh. It's a putty rubber. So these are really good. They pick up the graphite really, really well. So if you haven't got one, that's a top tip. They cost a couple of pounds. They last forever. Um, and that way you can you can mould it into the shape you want to get a really precise rubber. And then you can rub out your outlines. What you might have seen me do as well, you can literally just push it on and it lifts up the colour as well. Fashionable. Handy top tip, a putty rubber. Oh, everyone went to the Forest of Light show. Oh, that sounds lovely. What a nice way to celebrate your birthday. And while he uses blue tack, and that works well. That's clever. I didn't know that would work, but that's not a clever top tip. See, I love this. We share, we share. I'm learning from you guys as well. So I've got her colour in her claws. I'm just going to add in some black in the claws. I don't think I have time to do any blue tones. But it's always something. If you're still working on your picture when you set it finish, you can obviously you don't have to finish by midday necessarily. If you've got no other plans, you can carry on working. Like me. But um, in an ideal world, if I had more time, I would definitely put in some of the blue tones just because I think it will make the polar bears pop off the page a bit more as well. How is it spelt? I may get one. Putty. It's literally spelt P U T T Y. Putty rubber. So now that I've gone in with the grey tones and I've got some yellow golden tones, I am going to just use the black subtly to create some more fur lines and shadowing where it's a bit darker. And that big, that darker contrast, again, will make my polar bear look a bit more 3D and realistic.
I don't want to I don't want to just outline it because I think then that make it look a bit more cartoony and that's not the effect I'm going for today. So I'm just looking again at my reference picture looking for the darker areas and then putting a little bit of black in those darker areas. Natalie's but they eat seal seals, you they do. Oh, I was quite excited because I looked out the window. The oh. snow comes. He's, he's off. He's out in the snow. It's not settled. <laughs> it's not big, good enough to, to play in really yet. The, the timing on it's brilliant. The <laughs> trampoline, though. So ring seals are their main source of food. And it does include eating baby seals because they're more vulnerable and they're often left up on the um, ice when the mum goes to hunt. So unfortunately, the cute little baby seals that have got the white fluffy fur can be victim to the polar bear. So some more facts quickly before I start adding some water. Let me find. Male polar bears can grow as big as 10 men. They can weigh up to 800 kilograms and are twice the size of females. They can also grow up to three meters long. So if you imagine your door frame, your door frame is two meters. So another half of one of those, that is humongous. <laughs> they can smell their prey from a kilometer away. So that's quite a distance. And they can smell and they'll start tracking a prey from that much of a distance. Do they have any predators? No. Well, unless you class us. So we are the biggest threat to them in terms of climate change and the oil industry looking for more oil. So we threaten their habitat more than they are hunted. So they are effectively top of their food chain, but they still don't escape harm from humankind, unfortunately. Can we see Michael's drawing? Michael, do you want to show your work? Sure. Michael's gone with a lot of colour on his. This is Michael's. He's got the babies. You signed inside the polar bear. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely one way of doing it. But I like the way you've used blues. That's cute. Well done, Michael. other facts have I got for you. They are found in other places, not just the Arctic, so they're found in the frozen wilds of the Arctic in Canada and Alaska, Greenland, Russia and Norway. So they're not just in one place. And there's 19 subspecies, I think I've read, 19 different subspecies of polar bear. Oh, this is an interesting fact, Michael, I like this. They need water just like every other animal, but they don't get it like other animals. So they don't just drink water. You should imagine you think they're surrounded by it. Um, they get their they get their water from the chemical reaction in their bodies that breaks down fat. I just that's a completely new one on me. I don't know if other animals do that as well. I might have to research that further research. Before I add some water. 
Um, they are the largest carnivores on land, so not just the Arctic, anywhere in the world, they are the largest carnivore that we have. So bigger than grizzly bears, it seems. They can live 20 to 30 years, but only a small percentage of polar bears live past 15 to 18 years. The oldest known polar bear in the Arctic lived for 32 years. The oldest known polar bear in a zoo lived for 45 years. Really? I don't imagine the zoo is a great place for them, though, is it? Mm -hmm. They used to polar regions. Two thirds of the world's bear, polar bears could be extinct by 2050 if greenhouse gas fueled global warming keeps melting their Arctic sea ice habitat. So, as I said right at the beginning, they're, they're not considered rare or endangered yet, but they are vulnerable because of human behaviour, unfortunately. Oh, can you Google something for me, Michael? So this next fact, my last fact, is many think of polar bears as silent giants, but in reality, these bears can be pretty vocal. So interestingly, polar bears have a wide range of variety of sounds, from growling to humming, chuffing to crying. So can you find me some sound bites of polar bears so we can play them and we can hear what a polar bear sounds like? Um, polar bear sound, yeah? Yeah. So I'm using water now to sort of try and manipulate my colour around and make it look like paint. If you're doing the same and you've not used watercolour pencils before, key is to not overload your brush with water and to work on one bit at a time. You're spreading the colour, but obviously you, you don't want to just make it one big blob, so you need to keep control of it still and try and keep the highlighted areas and the, and the white space as well. Well, that's terrifying. <laughs> so this is a polar bear's. Oh, that's loud. That's a polar bear's roar. <laughs> Might need to turn that down a little bit. <laughs> Can you get a, a polar bear chuffing? See what that sounds like, just because that sounds interesting. Natalie's nearly finished. Yeah, my polar bear's my favourite bear. I think they might be my favourite bear as well. Yours would be red panda, wouldn't it, Michael? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although, is that technically a bear? We will find out when we visit China, won't we? Next term. Why do they sound like dinosaurs? Well, how do we know what dinosaurs sound like? I reckon that what you associate with the sound of dinosaur, from films, for example, has probably used sound bites from something like a polar bear or another animal that roars. And that's why we associate it with sound like a dinosaur, because they've used recordings of animals that exist today in order to create that sound. No huffing. No huffing. Huffing. Oh, chuffing. 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 Ch huffing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Red pandas are definitely popular here. We will be drawing a red panda next term when we visit China. I've got grizzly bear chuffing. No. Yeah, she has such loud on screen. Imagine what it'd be like in real life. I don't imagine you'd want to stand still and find out if it was friendly. If you heard that, <laughs> that would be terrifying. There's no polar bear. What about polar bear humming? Humming. That's what it says. It's come from W W. Was it W W F? So I imagine the information is pretty accurate. Yeah, it does sound like from Jurassic Park, doesn't it? See, now I'm going to be going down a rabbit hole of how did they make the dinosaur sounds from Jurassic Park? What animals did they use? No. Just saying black bears. What about crying? Probably they're crying. Um, we started a couple of minutes late because of my technical issues, so I'll give myself that couple of minutes as well. Mm. 
they use turtles of all things. Is that the Jurassic Park noises? Didn't know turtle made a noise. Is that polar bear again? Is that a polar bear again? Yeah, that's crying, man. Hmm. Yeah, red pandas are more like raccoons than polar bears. Yeah, I, I had that impression as well. For Jurassic Park, they use turtles. Wow, that's my mind blown for the day. Um, and it's snowing. Yay! My polar bear looks like the head of an anteater. Well, maybe you've made a hybrid polar bear anteater. You know, it just shows use of imagination. And I bet your drawing looks better than the blank piece of paper you started with. Just, but I love your painting. Thank you. Right, one thing I will say is do not compare yourself or your paintings to anybody else. I've been painting for <clears throat> a long time. Um, I'm going into my 40th year now, so I, it's all about practice. You should only, the only thing you should compare if you can do anything is compare to your previous drawings and then you can see how you're developing. <laughs> It's snowing here too. I'm very jumping down, up and down, excited. <laughs> Not settling yet though. It's too wet out, our arms, I think. Thank you for the tutorial. You're all quite welcome. Like I say, we're here every week during our term time. Uh, next week, what are we doing next week? Arctic Fox, is it? One of them. Um, and if you haven't already, definitely check out Theatre of Science and the Twinkle Home Ed. There's, if you weren't aware, there's a Home Ed Facebook group for Twinkle as well. Um, it's got some great resources. And Laura on Theatre Science has got some amazing things going on. We're going to be joining in with those. All to do with the polar regions. I'm just moving and manipulating my pencil lines a little bit with the water. Hopefully I'll get finished in time. But I hope you've enjoyed it. I've learned a few new things. <laughs> Especially the turtle turtle sound effects we're using Jurassic Park. As we are thinking it could be both of theirs. Michael's got snow as well. Oh my goodness. <laughs> a bit point yet. And remember to um, click onto the events. Well, I've, I've put, created the events for all of the polar animals that we're studying this term. So you can click to join them now and then you'll get the reminders for them each week. If you are interested, if you're particularly artistic and you're interested in getting qualifications in artistic and creative subjects, you might want to check out on our website as well. We've got quite a few from entry level. We're going right up to level three. There's no minimum or maximum ages. We have young people from the age of seven doing these qualifications, so um, do check them out or just feel free to drop us a message and ask questions. We like chatting to you guys. <laughs> okay, I think I um, rushed that a little bit, a little bit, but I think I've managed to get it done in time. I'm very much looking forward to seeing everybody else's interpretations, particularly the anteater hybrid. <laughs> um, don't forget to sign it. So I'm going to sign, and then I'm going to date 2024, our first drawing of 2024, my one anyway. So that is my polar bear mama and her baby. I've really enjoyed this. What a lovely start to our week. And thank you to all the new guys for joining us as well. Feel free to spread the word if you know other families that are home editing and want a free provision. Like I say, it's not, it's not a to-do like a how-to this is just how i do it and everybody's way is the right way for them um don't forget to post your pictures i really want to see your pictures <laughs> so don't forget to post this evening look you're looking for a picture of this image not the actual 
reference image. So you're looking for my drawing from about 6 p.m. tonight. So long as you put a comment on with your photo before 9 p.m., I will come along and give you some written feedback as well. So thank you from the newbies. <laughs> thank you for joining us, newbies. Um, I'm almost done, don't end yet. Okay, well, it's not 12 o'clock, I'm going to hold on. But like I say, if you need to carry on, because you want to spend more time when you're drawing, you absolutely can. You don't have to finish just because I've finished. Um, if you want to extend it on and add in the backgrounds, if I had my time, I'd definitely put in some blue tones in the background to represent the snow, but I've run out of time, unfortunately. I was too busy chatting, wasn't I? Just like at school. Um, hopefully, we'll see you all next week when we draw the next polar animal. And like I say, um, feel free to share the wood and send a message if you want to say hello. I look forward to seeing everybody's work later on this evening. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.